ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله as we approach the end of this blessed month of ramadan it is time to get a divorce why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in his noble book kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut that every soul shall taste death there is not a single one who is alive except that they are going to die there is not a single one who may hear my voice except that death it is coming unto them there will be a day that that will be their last day and there will be no more days for them wa qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa inna ma tuwaffawna ujurakum yawm alqiyamah and that verily you shall be paid your wages in full on the day of judgment on the day of judgment you shall be paid your wages in full this is why it's time to get a divorce because for the one who does good then they will be rewarded bi ithnillahi ta'ala and the one who does bad the one who does evil the one who did not believe the one who was not a follower of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the one who was not upon the sunnah now you are going to pay now it is for you punishment it is incumbent that we get this divorce wa qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa man zuhziha an an-nar so whoever they are safe from going to the fire wa udkhil al-jannah and they enter into the jannah fa qad faz then this is the one who is successful this is why we need a divorce allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he goes on to say wa mal hayatu dunya illa mata'ul ghurur and the life of this world it is nothing but an enjoyment that is deceptive there is nothing but the enjoyment of a deception that's why we need a divorce wa qala sha'ir the poet is mentioned inna lillahi ibadan futana talaqud dunya wa khafu al fitna wa lamma nadhru fiha alimu annaha laysat li hayyin watana فجعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الاعمال فيه صفنا the poet mentioned he said that verily there belongs to Allah ibadan futana slaves that are intelligent slaves 
that utilize their intellect. Slaves that are extremely smart. They divorce this world. This is why you need a divorce. You need to get rid of this world. Why? Because it's nothing but a deception. When I mean get rid of this world, I mean what? You have to stop allowing this world to get in the way of your hereafter. Because this is not the purpose of this world. To distract you from the hereafter. To be a hindrance between you and your true success in the hereafter. The nature of this world is as such, like these intelligent ones, they deal with it. They divorce this world. And they fear the fitna. They fear the punishment of Allah. They fear coming Yomul Qiyamah and they are bankrupt. They fear coming on the day of judgment and the world has distracted them to the extent that they have not prepared for their real life. They fear that fitna because what trial is greater than that trial? They fear that this world will lead them to making shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fear that this world will lead them to leaving off the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why they divorced this world. That's why we need a divorce. They have divorced this world because they're scared of the trials and tribulations. They're scared of the calamity. And they looked at it. They examined it. They studied it. They did their research as relates to this world. And they realize that this abode is not the abode for the one who truly wants to live a good life. This world is not the abode for the one who truly wants life because the true life is in the hereafter. How does Allah Ta'ala describe this life? This is the enjoyment of a deceiving pleasure. That's what this life is here right now. It's an enjoyment of a deceiving pleasure. It is that which is running away from us. So why are you chasing it? It is that which is trying to leave you. Why are you trying to commit to it? It is that which doesn't care about you. Why is your only concern about it? This doesn't even make sense. This is why we need a divorce. So therefore, these intelligent ones, when they looked at the reality of this world, they realized this world, it is nothing but that which needs to be crossed. This world is nothing but that which the only way around is through. So with that being the case, the only way to the Jannah is to go through this life. The only way to the Jannah is to go through this life. So for those who want the Jannah, and that is their goal, that is their ultimate destination, that is what they're working toward, then they realize we can't get there except that we got to go through this life. So therefore, they have looked at this life as nothing but that which has to be crossed. They look at this life, it is nothing like an ocean. That's it, a vast body of water. And how do you get from point A to point B over a vast body of water? How do you go over a vast body of water? You have to what? You have to have a boat. You have to have a ship. You have to have a vessel that will transport you over that vast body of water. So therefore, they look at this dunya and realize it is nothing but a vast body of water. And thus, they have taken their righteous good deeds as their vessel, as their boat, as their means of transportation to where? To the Jannah, to the hereafter. Because this world, it is nothing in which deserves our concern like that. Why? Because it doesn't care about us. So why do you care about it? هذا أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروا فإنه هو الغفور الرحيم. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد يا عباد الله we have to have a serious conversation with ourselves. Serious. How come we're living like we're not going to die? How come we're approaching Ramadan like we're going to live in this world forever? How come? How come when it comes to the ibadat, we find all types of excuses? When it comes for the worship, I don't feel good tonight. Not that a person is actually sick. Because if a person is actually sick, this is something different. No. But we're just saying a person, they just don't feel like it. They're just not feeling it tonight. 
So they're not going to go tonight. I'll go tomorrow night. Yeah, subhanAllah. Why are you treating this world like it's going to be a tomorrow night for you? There may not be a tomorrow night. What good is tomorrow night if you die today? What good is tomorrow night if you don't live past this night? Why are you treating this Ramadan as if you're going to get another Ramadan? Do you have an agreement between you and Allah that you're going to be here for a next number of Ramadans? Do you have that agreement? If so, where can I get one? Where can I get mine from? Because I don't know if I'm going to live to see the Eid, let alone to see another Ramadan. I don't know if I'm going to live to see tomorrow, let alone another year from now. So why are we living this life as if we're going to be here forever? How, why are you allowing this deceptive world to distract you from what is good? Oh, I didn't read the Ramadan this year. I didn't read the Quran of Ramadan this year. I'll read it next year. Yeah, subhanAllah. You have a promise you're going to be here next year? Why are you allowing this world to distract you? How come you weren't there every night for Taraweeh? How come you didn't pray Taraweeh every single night? Oh, brother, I got to get up early for work. Oh, brother, I got to do this for work. Oh, brother, I got to, I got to, I got to. What's the commonality? The dunya. The dunya. Why are we allowing the dunya to be a distraction? Why are we committing ourselves to the dunya when she's not committing herself to you? Yeah, subhanallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Kun fi dunya ka anna ka gharib aw abiru sabil. Be in the dunya like one who is a stranger. Like one who he is a stranger. Or one who is just a traveler, just passing through it. Naam. Like one who is a traveler, just passing through it. Who told us to be like a traveler in this world? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you are traveling from point A to point B, if you have to take a rest between this and between that at a rest station, at a layover, so on and so forth. How much do you invest in that layover? How much do you invest in that rest stop? Do you look to set up camp? Do you look to build and establish yourself in a rest stop? Do you look to build and establish yourself when you know you're only there on a layover? No. Why? Because you will say, I'm only here but for a few hours. I'm only here but for a day or so. And then I'm moving on. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Mali what is, dunya? What, is, what is my connection to the dunya? What is my connection to the dunya? This is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ma ana fi dunya illa karakib. He said, I'm not in the dunya except like a rider. It's the villa tahti shajra. I take the, the enjoyment of the shade under the tree. Thumma raha wa tarakaha. And then I get up and I leave it. That's the similar to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, what is my connection to this world? Except that verily I am just like a rider who I take some shade under the tree. I take a rest. I take some shade under the tree. The tree is what? This world. And then I get up and I leave it. I get up and I leave it. You don't invest if you're just taking some shade under a tree. You don't invest in that tree. You don't invest in that property because you know this is not my final destination. My final destination is not here. My final destination is somewhere that is better. My final destination is somewhere that lasts forever. This world don't last forever. The poet he mentioned, he said, Tarjul Baqa Bedarin, You want to stay forever in a place that it is not designed for you to stay forever. You acting like you're gonna be here forever, and the reality of it is is that. Death will come and snatch you away from this world. Death will come and rip you away from this world. You're not meant to be here forever. So why are you acting like you're going to be here forever? Naam. And then the poet, he mentioned, he said, Hal samirta muntaqil? He said, have you ever heard of shade that stays in one place? Have you ever heard of a shade that was stationary? Huh? When you examine the trees, you realize what? Where the shade is at in the morning time, that's not where the shade is at in the noon. Where the shade is at in the noon, that's not where the shade is at in the end of the day at Asr. And then at Maghrib, what happened? There's no more shade for you. Huh? This is the reality of this world. The same way you see the sun keep coming up and going down. 
The same way you see the moon keep going through its phases. The same way you see the seasons come in and they go out. This world is not meant for anything to remain as is. Things will not stay the same in this world. Either you're getting better or you're getting worse. Either you're more God-fearing or you are more treacherous, you're more disobedient. So why we live in this world in a manner in which that will equate in our destruction in the hereafter. And now what's going to be your excuse, Yomul Qiyamah? What's going to be your excuse, Yomul Qiyamah? My boss didn't let me go to Jumu'ah. My boss here let me go to Eid. Oh, I couldn't do this because I, I constantly had to be at work and so on and so forth. That's what you're going to go with? That's what you feel comfortable with? How come you didn't read the Quran this Ramadan? How come you didn't finish the Quran this Ramadan? You didn't finish it in Ramadan, but you want me to believe you're going to finish it next month? You didn't finish it prior to Ramadan. Ramadan come, you didn't finish. But after Ramadan, you're going to finish? Why are you allowing this world to be a distraction? Why are you committing yourself to that in which does not care about you, is running away from you while you run towards it? Does that make any sense? أسأل الله تعالى أن يوفقني وإياكم إما يحبه ويرضى وأن يجعلنا من الذين يستمعون قولا فيتبعون أحسنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار هذا فاقم الصلاة